Hey, what's happening, you guys? Credit D. Will here from Sweetwater, and today I am super excited because we have a special guest that's going to be joining us in the studio today. My guy John over at N Music is in the building, and he is bringing by the new NPC One Plus from Akai. So we're just going to dive in, take a look at, see what's up with all the new features, see what all this thing has to offer, and he's going to just show me the ropes on how to use an NPC and get started with an NPC. So before we get started, make sure you guys hit that thumbs up subscribe to the channel and then hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of our future up and coming videos and if you want to check out the npc for yourself then either go over to sweetwater.com or check out the links in the description where you can find them there as well so let's go ahead and dive in and let's get creative what's going on everybody as d will said i'm john from in music we're here at sweetwater a little bit about myself i'm the product specialist with akai particularly the mpc line I've been using MPCs probably for about 15 years. I've taught classes to youth from 10 to 17. We had MPC Beats Academy. If I could teach a 10 year old how to do it, I'm certain that I could teach D Will how to use this. So what do we have man. here today? I don't know, I ain't that good, so I'll just Nah, <laughs> man, this thing, this thing is so user friendly, it's ridiculous, man. It's got all the cheat codes inside. I mean, a complete novice can really get into it. And I know you are not a novice by any means. Yeah. You might be new to the NPC line, but I give this man a week and he will be cranking out fire with this. So what do we have today? We've got the MPC One Plus the newest in the family line of MPCs. This is the newest latest, right? So it's a updated version of the MPC one. Obviously we've got the brand new red colorway. Bro, that red looks super dope, bro. We got the, we got the live right there. So that's the black version, but this red is really popping and it's super dope. Right, the black pads, the black screen and knobs, everything is just really good on the contrast with the clear buttons. It just really pops off of the MPC itself. Yeah. Right, so some of the newer updates that we have for this, obviously the most obvious is the red colorway. But when you get underneath the hood, we've built it up. So we took the processor from the X mm -hmm. and the Live 2 and we put it in the 1. Speed up how, you know, it processes everything on top of that. We've quadrupled the internal storage. So the MPC-1 has four gigs of internal storage. The OnePlus has 16 gigs of internal storage. Comes with two gigs of exclusive content already preloaded. Oh, wow. I mean, there's synth sounds, there are drum kits. I mean, you name it, there are things in here to get your creativity flowing. All sorts of effects. You know, we'll dig into that a little and bit this, deeper. This is already built in, like just directly built into the NPC right when you absolutely, oh, wow. absolutely right out the box. It comes with a multitude of drum programs, everything from drum one shots to melody samples, bass chops. I mean, we'll dig into that as we start to load it up. But mm -hmm. on top of that, we've married that technology, as I was explaining to you with the MPC Key 61. We've paired the whole sequencer of the MPC line and the drum kit style finger drumming with VST quality synthesis. Mm. So that is not exclusive to the Key 61. This also has VST quality sounds in it as well. So wow. this is completely standalone. You do not need a computer for this. You could do everything right in the MPC itself, from recording vocals to adding studio quality effects. Like I said, top-notch VST quality sounds. We have over 25 different synth engines now that you can add to it. Uh, we'll get into all of that as we make the beat. A um, Couple of other things that are cool. We've added Wi-Fi and Bluetooth to this. So now you can do the whole Ableton link. So when we want to cook up together, we can hook them up wirelessly. Okay. Everything will work in sync. Really amazing what it can do. So I know that you're new to this, right? But let me break down the workflow for you. Yeah, right? that's what I that's what I'm more. So because I know like um all right, so to get started, like if I was just starting off kind of like what I am right now, uh like you said with the workflow wise, how different is the workflow from like a linear DAW? So somebody that's coming from like FL Studios or something like that, or or there's beat making inside the box, how different it is that from this? Like how do you build a beat? So it is slightly different. You can view it in a linear format, just like a DAW. So you can edit all your MIDI data mm. in a linear grid format, just like an FL, right? We've got this grid page here. 
and this is where you'll see all your MIDI data for each track. So oh, wow. you can see it in a linear fashion as well. But how I like to think of it as three separate sections that you build up to make a beat, right? Every MPC has these three rectangular sections on this main page, and this is how it all operates, right? So at the very bottom, we've got our program section. I like to think of this as like our sound sources. This is where we load up our sounds, whether it be drum kits, whether it be the VST quality plugin sounds I was talking about. You could do clip launching. You could set up MIDI tracks to control rack mounted traditional MIDI gear. You could set the program section up to do CV gates as well, right? And all of that is done by these icons here in the middle. So right now I'm on a drum program icon. It reflects and says drum program. But when I switch to the VST plugins, it now says plugin program. If I wanted to do key groups, clip launching, MIDI tracks, or CV gate to control my modular gear, the program section changes based upon which icon you have selected, right? So we hit the drum icon. We know we're gonna have drums as our sound source and our pro uh, program section. We load up some drums here. We record those to the track above. We switch the track, we load up more sounds. We record a bunch of different tracks. We then have a sequence, right? So at the bottom, we have our sounds. We record those sounds to the track above. Once we have multiple recorded tracks, we then have a sequence. And you could think of the sequence in a couple of different ways. It could be your full composition, right? It could be the complete beat. So we could set the bar length to like 64 bars and produce in a linear fashion. Or your sequence could be a segment of your arrangement. And this is the way that I like to work in particular. Yeah. So sequence one could be like your introduction. You can move to sequence two. You could build a verse section, move to sequence three, build a chorus section, and then you can link them all together later on. And it's more modular. That's why I like it this way, because when you're making the different sequences, you might think that one feels better as a chorus or a verse, but later on you might change your mind. If you're producing in a linear fashion, then you have to go through and move things around. To me, it's a little bit harder that way. This way you just move the order of your sequences and everything follows the path, mm. right? And, and we'll get into that in this cookup that we're gonna do today. So let me show you the basics of how to load up some sounds, right? So we have this browse button here and we also have this sounds tab here. You can use either or. I'm gonna start with browse just to show you how easy it is. You tap on drums and you get all your drum content here. I mean. So loading up your sounds on here, is it, do you, uh, I see you got an SD card slot right here. Is there like any other way you can load your sounds on it or? So. What I'm dealing with now are the preloaded sounds, but mm -hmm. if you wanted to add new sounds, you could do that via Wi-Fi as well. You could sample them in, you could put them on an SD card, you could use the USB drive in the back. So we have all these drum expansions here, right? These are all different expansion packs. And if you wanted to download newer ones, you can download them via Wi-Fi as well. You could put them on a USB drive, plug it in, you can put them on an SD card, really, whatever works best for your workflow. Gotcha. That's one thing I love about the MPC line yeah. is it's adaptable to your workflow. There isn't one specific way that you're forced to go about it. Even with the button structure, a lot of these things can be done from the main screen, right? You see me double tap this to get to the grid page, but I could also access the grid page here. Okay. Right? So if you're more of a touch screen person, you might want to use these icons to navigate through the different pages. If you're more of a physical button person, you might want to use the physical buttons, right? So it gives you the option to, to work it from the angle that you see. Dope. Let me shut up and let you do your thing now. Go ahead, man. Nah, man, nah. This is a collaborative <laughs> effort, right? Yeah, so let yeah. me load up a drum program and show you how easy it is. You literally hit this browse button here. And then if you're not on content, you just make sure you're on content on the left hand side, you select your drums, and then we have all of these different drum programs. You know, you tap on one, hold play, and it's gonna preview the different drum kits that you can load up. Right, and I'll show you how easy it is. You just hit load, go back to your main page, and now that kit is propagated to your program section. Okay. So you can record your drum pattern to track one, or you can separate them out and just do your snares on track one, your kicks on track two, however you prefer. I build the whole beat on track one, and then I explode it later on. Yeah. So it basically, you build it as one track, and then you can separate the tracks out at a later time. Okay. So now we have a drum program loaded, right? We would record a drum track to track one, 
and then we'd switch to track two and keep it moving, right? So let's get into that. Let's change the bars, go with four bars. We'll drop the BPM down somewhere in the 90s, right? And we can record in some drum sounds. Now, I'm not the greatest finger drummer. I can get by. Yeah, me either. <laughs> but I like to make it as easy on myself as possible, right? Yeah. I'm not here. Obviously, we're on camera, right? So this is somewhat of a live performance. But when I'm making my productions, my beats, I like to make it at my speed. I'm not trying to perform for somebody. I'm just trying to make the best possible composition I can make. So Definitely. I like to make it easy on myself. So I'll use just one sound at a time, right? And then I'll use the overdub. So to record any sound, once you have it selected here, you hit the record button and then you hit play start. So you might be wondering what's the difference between play and play start. I was about to ask that, yeah. Right, so when you hit play start, it starts your beat from the very beginning every time. Oh, wow. Right, when you hit play, it's going to start your beat from wherever you left off. So if you watch up here on the top of the screen, I hit play start, we have this line that tracks your loop, right? So this line moves across the screen, and when it gets to the end, it comes back to the beginning. That lets you know when to stop playing, right? You see it loops around. Now, when I stop it, we're in the middle. If I hit play start, it jumps back from the beginning. That, okay. If I just hit play, it's going to start here from wherever I left off. Okay. Right? Easy and then enough. the other two buttons, record and overdub, you probably are familiar with what they do, but I'll still go over that as well. Record is destructive recording. So whatever you record, it's going to erase whatever you had before. So mm. if I do record and play start... Right, and then I record again. I want to add hi hats. If I use record, it's going to replace what was already there. Mm. Right. If I use overdub, it's going to add to what I had before. So let's go through this process. I'm gonna build a quick drum beat. I'll use record and play start. I'll add a snare. I'll overdub a kick. Then I'll overdub some hi hat. Right, so I've got my snares in there. I can always check on the grid page, right? See where they fall on the grid. If I played anything out of time, I can move around and check, right? And I could tell here, I played this note a little early, right? And I can slide it over on the grid pretty easy. I could either use the jog wheel or I can delete that one if I wanted to. And I could draw in another one, right? So similar to FL where you have the grid and you can draw in on the grid, we've got these different tools up top, pencil, eraser, selection, and the zoom tool so that you can move around the screen, right? Now we've got our snares in, we do overdub, play start, Right? And I could always go back to this grid, and I see that I played this one kick at the same time as the snare. So I'll highlight that one, and I'll nudge it before, get a little bit of syncopation. Mm. <laughs> and if I don't like it, then I can always move it over as well. I'm going to move this and that snare. There we go. There you go. Right, yeah, that's yeah. right in the pocket. I want it to be super easy to edit, right? Even a complete beginner could do this. So let's go back to the main page, and we're going to overdub some hi-hats, right? So I'm going to use note repeat for this one. When you hold down note repeat, you get that repeated hi-hat. Now, you could change the speeds up here on the screen as well. So if I wanted to do eighth notes, sixteenths, thirty seconds. Right. So is there a way to lock the... Um... Absolutely. You double tap it and it dope, latches it. Dope, dope, Awesome. Right. So we'll add some hi-hats in here randomly real quick. Right, and you see I'm not really doing any rhyme or reason to this. I'm just throwing them in there real quickly just to show you how easy it is to do. You don't even have to know rhythm, right? This is going to figure out the rhythm for you with the different time signatures. Right, so now we've got a basic drum beat in there. There's multiple ways you can go, right? 
you can start adding these samples in and here. And this is this is all from a kit that's already pre preloaded. Exactly. This <laughs> is the hip hop kit Premiere Beats Demo Two, right? Mm -hmm. This is one of many kits that you can load up. Not only does it come with drum one shots, it also comes with chopped up melody pieces, so mm -hmm. you can come in. Right? Yeah, that's and, dope. and we could finish a beat that quickly. I yeah. can overdub some sample chops. Yo. <laughs> Minimal effort Bro, and you have a full fire, production yeah. with one kit used, right? Yeah. That's the easiest way to do it. Use the kit sounds, build a beat around that, get familiar with the process, right? And then you can move over to sequence two and you could say, I'm going to use the same kit. I'm going to switch up the drum pattern. I'm going to, instead of starting with this, I'm going to start with that. And you can build a whole nother pattern for a different part of your song. So mm. if we wanted this to be sequence one to be our verse, sequence two could be our hook, right? So another way you can do it is you could copy out this sequence, right? So what I did is I just hit this pencil here and then I come over to copy sequence, right? I'm going to copy it to sequence two. And here, I'm just preserving that drum pattern, but I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna delete these sample chops, right? So I just scroll to the beginning of the page, zoom it in so I can see everything. So you're deleting the, the sample chops from the previous se uh, sequence? Exactly, gotcha. from, from sequence one. Mm -hmm. That way here, I can go in and play different chops and still use that same drum beat, right? Gotcha. Mm -hmm. You could build a whole new drum beat just for the sake of time and for the sake of the demo. There we go, and then zoom back out, right? So now we still have that drum beat preserved, and we could come in and play different patterns here, right? So. Right, and it just switches up the feel and the vibe. So you can go from one sequence, We'll roll into the next sequence. All right now, you're starting to build out. So that automatically transitioned over to that next sequence? Nope. So what I did is when it's playing, I just turned the dial. Right? So you played the first sequence, and then you turn the dial, and it preps the next sequence to mm. play afterward. Now, I was speaking of arrangement earlier, mm -hmm. right? So this isn't the arrangement way I was talking about. This is just playing the sequences one after another just to see how they vibe. If you wanted to put this in an arrangement view, you come over to this menu page and you go to song mode. Now I can take those sequences and I can insert those into a list and I could switch between them, right? So now it's just gonna play through in a linear fashion. Right. And then the more sequences you build, you start moving them around, mm -hmm. you get the flow of the song, and then you can either convert that back to a sequence so that you see it on the main page, or you can export it as stems, as a stereo out, as an MP3, wave, all sorts of different formats, you can export it out as well. Right now, this is probably the most basic way to make a beat on the MPC one. I just wanted you to see how easy it is to get into it right out the box. Bro, that is super easy. <laughs> like, for real. I love the fact that you got, like, a touchscreen, too, because, I like, seeing you navigate on the actual grid, it's like you don't really get that inside the, like, if you're inside of a DAW or anything like that, being able to just dial it in right there with your finger, that's super dope, man. Right, I'm, and we're not perfect. We're yeah. human, so we make mistakes. Yeah, I make so mistakes all the time. It's <laughs> easy to go in and edit any mistake or... Yeah. Like, say there's a, a pattern you just can't play live. You could draw that pattern in, and it will still, you know, represent what you were trying to do. So let me, let me ask you a question. So say if I got that sequence and I wanted to drop it out, and like, like do like an immune effect or something like that, how do I go about doing that? Do I? So, do so I you, can do, you can do pad mutes. 
right? So I could come into this pad mute page, mm -hmm. and if I wanted to drop out different sounds, right? So I could. Does it, does, it, does it automatically save or do you have to record that in or how does that work? No, it doesn't automatically save. This is just live track mute and uh, you can record it in or you can just create different sequences. That's the way that I prefer to work, right? Mm -hmm. So what I would do is I just showed you a quick way to make a beat, yeah. right? If I were doing it the long way, I would create different sequences and just have the drops on one sequence. Gotcha, gotcha, right? gotcha. So, Say this was the intro. I don't want any drums in my intro. I'll mute oh, these out here. Oh yeah. Okay. Copy the sequence out to another sequence, right? And then on this one, I'll unmute them. So you're just pretty much like you're duplicating those sequences and taking stuff away. Got you. Just like if you were on a linear DAW, then all you you have your intro, you have your hook, and then you take away certain parts of the beat. So the track mutes is kind of like that. Exactly. That's so dope. That's right awesome. now I just did it for pads because we only had one track. We yeah. built that whole beat with one program and one track. Yeah. Right? But let's dive a little bit deeper. Let's clear this out. Right? So I'm going to clear the sequence. Right? So now I'll clear all of them just so we're starting fresh. Let's build something that's a little bit more in-depth. Right, let me show you a little bit more of the features that it actually has. So we'll use these drums because they're there, right? They're good drum sounds, and I'm not going to use any of these samples this go around. I'm going to get into those VST sounds I was talking about, mm -hmm. right? So let me just lay in a quick drum beat. Oh, let me change that tempo. And these are all the new sounds that comes with the MPC One Plus, or? Correct. Okay. So these sounds are included right out the box. Now, some of the VSTs that I might get into, um, they might be for purchase, mm -hmm. right? It doesn't come with all of them that I have loaded up, but you can purchase them. I just wanted to showcase as much as we could today. Okay, gotcha. So I have all of those extra synth engines on my thumb drive that's gotcha. plugged in, okay, right? Bad. So we'll access sounds that some come with it, some don't, right? That's kind of the whole model. Even with the Key 61, that comes with a bunch of uh, VST plugins, but will be releasing more sounds over time. Gotcha. Right? So if you see in this sounds page, uh, let me go back to the plugins. Right? So we have these different synth engines. There are going to be more pages you can tab over to as we develop more synth engines. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Right? So not all of these are included with the OnePlus, but I do like the sounds from them, and I did want to show that they're available and that they work easily. Right, So some of them, like Fabric XL, you'll have to go and purchase that for the OnePlus, but it does come with Hype, it does come with Odyssey and Mellotron, uh, it comes with Baseline and Electric. So a lot of these sounds right out the box are included, some aren't, but my goal today was showcase as much as possible. Yeah, 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 right? yeah. Definitely. So let's get back to the flow of that. So what we'll do now is we'll build up a track one with just drums, we'll move on to track two, we'll add some bass sounds. Track three, we'll start to pull in some more synth sounds. That way you can see how you know much you can do with this and other features as well. Like we talked about track mute, but I only did pad mute because I only had 16 pads loaded up. Yeah. Track mute, we're gonna have multiple tracks so you can see how we can start to do the arrangement that way as well. All right, so we got a basic drum beat in here on track one. We roll over to track two, and this time we're going to switch to the plug-in instruments. Mm, okay. Now I can grab this tab here, pull it out, hit sounds, and we see the different plug-in engines. So I could start with Fabric XL. This is probably the go-to plug-in for anything modern, right? So everything from pianos and synths to pads to sub basses are all within this engine. Mm, okay. You could literally make the whole, you know, beat with this one engine minus the drums. Um, or you can 
use multiple synth engines, you know, however you want to do it. So you could come in and you could say, let's grab some pads, right? And now we can use either a MIDI controller or we can use the pads, right? So I was talking about these cheat codes that we have in here. I like cheat right? codes. <laughs> so say you, you know a little bit about music, but you don't really have any theory background. You've heard like a minor in these terms right but you really don't know what it means. that's me 100 percent, bro that's I'm a not lot a of music people theory guy. stepping yeah. into the game yeah. right they, mm -hmm. they're like i want to make beats but i don't know everything about music i just yeah. know i want to make beats well again the mpc one plus got you covered so you come over here you tap on this notes page right you could either hold shift and hit 16 levels or you could double tap because every clear button has dual functions, okay, right? You. So you see this one says main and grid. Mm -hmm. If I hit it once, it goes to the main page. If I double tap it, it brings me to the grid page. Conversely, I can hold shift and hit it, and it will bring me to the grid. All right, bet. So all solid colored buttons only have one function. All clear color buttons are multifunctional except the shift button, right? So come over here, shift 16 levels. We come to our notes page or our pad perform page. Super dope page for people who don't know anything about music theory. That's my page. Right. So you come over here, you set it on notes or you could set it on chords, yeah. right? You could tell it what scale do I want to play in. So I say A minor, just I was mentioning that. Now it's setting this up to play chords in A minor. So every pad is going to play a chord now, right? Now, if I set it on notes, it's just going to play one note. In that right. same scale? In the same scale, right? So you want to keep, once you pick a scale, you want to stick with that for every track. You don't want to do track two and A minor. Does it, and track does it three. automatically switch over to the scale if you're in a different instrument, or do you got to go through it? No, nope, no. Nope. Once you set it up, once you set up pad performer, it's going to lock into where you have it. So if I close out of this, if I switch tracks, if I come back into it, it's still going to be Bad. locked into okay. where I have it. So you see if I change it here to B flat, go back, it's going to be on B flat still. Perfect. Right? Yeah. Nice and easy. So we'll use this to add some chords, add a quick little chord progression, right? So I'm going to drop this back on chords, right? And if you see, you hear people talk about chord progressions, and they might say things like, one four five or two five one you'll start to hear these terms the more you get into it well if you see right above this pad it says oh one oh two oh three oh four oh five oh six oh seven right so you can kind of think of that like the one four five so if i wanted to do a one four five progression i'm going to hit the one pad the four pad and then the five pad wow right? i never knew that and i've been messing around with the npc live so that is awesome. That is really cool, bro. So it's just building chords off yeah. of that note, right? So what it means is a one chord is a chord built off of the first note in the scale. Uh -huh. Four chord is a chord built off of the fourth note in the scale. So this is already building the chords for you, but they're numbered. So you could kind of play progressions that way if you want. Or you could go right here to progressions, and there are lists of progressions that you can, you know, do in different chords as well. But I'm going to stick here. So now I can do a one, four five right and i'm gonna drop this down to natural minor i like that darker minor sound yeah me too a lot better so we'll record in a quick one four five Right, so we've got our basic chord progression on track two with Fabric XL. Then you slot over to track three. You're going to add another plugin, right? Because plugin one is the one we just used on track two. So you hit this plus symbol. It instantiates plugin two. Now you pull that sound tab back out. You could pick a whole new engine, right? So here we'll go with baseline, right? Grab some subs. Get that like 808 feel, right? come back to notes page and we're going to set it on notes right because we don't want to play bass and chords uh -huh. change the octaves down here because i want lower notes right so you can go up or down or you could change the banks here as well 
A, B, C, D. And then if you want to get to the higher banks, you hold shift to get to the lower buttons, right? So I'm going to start. I could probably even go lower than that. So we'll go real low on this one and we'll follow, right? So we did one, four, and five. Easy. So we could use those same yeah, for the bass notes, yeah. Right? So I'll run that back. Right. And again, you could go to the grid page, see all the MIDI data, zoom in and out. If you hit any wrong notes, if anything's out of time or if there's something you couldn't play, like you wanted to do some crazy run here at the end. Right. So you could zoom in. Can you loop just one part of that grid if you wanted to? Like if say for a fact, well, say if I wanted to go back here and I wanted just to loop that last. Uh, like the fourth bar? Yeah, the fourth bar. Yeah, you could come here on the main page and you could tell it to start the loop on the fourth bar, right? So when you get, oops. So it's just gonna loop at that part? Yep, so say I wanna do, 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 right? At this last part and, and speed it up in time. I could come here. And then every note in between, I could add a note on the grid. So I could grab this pencil tool, let me make sure I'm on, find that A. Right, so I might not normally be able to play something this fast. I probably could, especially if I had keys, but now it's. <laughs> yeah. Right, and then we go back here, change it. Right, then we rinse and repeat. Move on to track four, hit the plus symbol again to bring in plug in three, drag out our sounds tab. What kind Bro. of sound you want to add here? Uh, I don't know, like a bell or something? I don't know, man, something high. Something high, so maybe like a lead or something lead. like that? Let's add a lead, yeah. Come into Hype. Hype's got some crazy leads in here. Let's see what we got, funk lead. And I'm just gonna make sure notes page off so let me roll through some of these let's rock with that one and then i'll go back to notes page right and So what do you think, up high here or somewhere in the middle? I said like right there in the middle. Yeah, middle. That's, that sounds about right. Boom. So again, chord. And obviously, if I was trying to make the best beat that I could, I'd take time and I'd figure out. But you see, I just mashed yeah, on bro, it. Yeah, bro, that is too it's easy. It's in key. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm telling you, I've taught this to 10-year-olds, and they come in here and they're like mashing on it, and I'm half expecting it to sound like noise, and they play me back the beat, <laughs> and it's better than any beat I made in my first two years of producing. <laughs> Facts, bro. Facts. That is crazy. That is so awesome, man. Yo, man, I've learned more in like 10 minutes sitting with you that I learned on YouTube or whatnot, bro. This is really good stuff, man. I really appreciate you coming through, showing me the NPC One Plus. 
um it's bro is i'm really gonna start diving into the npc and really getting my hands wet with it like i said i've been rocking with the npc live and the 61 key but i really haven't dove into it so you you giving me those extra little nuggets really gonna push me to you say you know what let me pick this bad boy up and get cooking with it so that's awesome man. absolutely and i know you like the live too because of the portability in the speaker this is just as portable like, yeah obviously it doesn't have the speaker it's not battery powered but you throw like this thing in the back the size of like, the, M- the mpc live so that's yeah you know if it fits in my backpack perfectly so when i'm on the road and i'm you know i have downtime and i'm at the hotel or whatever I break it out, plug my headphones in, get to cooking up, man. Don't waste any time, you know? Yep. So I was showing you that whole arrangement thing, right? We've got a couple of tracks now. Let me show you it with tracks. Same concept, just kind of expanded out. So we take this sequence, we copy out this sequence a couple of times. Right, and now we have four sequences. So we come into track mute now instead of pad mute. And we see the different tracks. So we don't want drums. We don't want bass. Maybe we just start with a chord progression on this one, right? Come over to sequence two, do the same thing, track mute. This one, we're going to drop in just the drums with the chord progression, right? And then sequence three, track mute, we'll take out that lead. And sequence four, we'll have everything. So now I could play it and turn the dial, or I could go to menu, to song, and I can insert these different instances and just play one, two, three, four. And if I wanted to add more, you know, go back the other way. And then when I play it, it's gonna play through in a linear fashion. You get the picture. Now, say I wanted to do like a drum break before that chorus hits in. I come back to sequence three. I go to my drum track, right? Come over to the grid page and select that last fourth bar. Delete out that fourth bar. And now when it plays, oops, when it plays from three to four, you're going to get that drum drop and then the chorus hits. Okay. <laughs> right, and it just keeps it modular. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So say I don't want to start with one, I want to start with two. I can easily move those around and create my arrangements. Now I know I was intending to start with chords, but I just started with bass because I muted the wrong Sounded pad or good whatever. To me. But it just shows you even <laughs> yeah. a mistake can still ride through, right? And sometimes some of the best things I I call them happy mistakes. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I'll the, be playing something on the keys and I'm like <laughs> I didn't mean to do that, but what was that? Let me recreate that, and it'll be like the best beat I ever made. That's how the magic happens, bro. Absolutely. So let me show you one last feature that I think super dope. I won't go too crazy into it, but I'm going to clear out this sequence. Right. Bring the drums back in. Now, I know I showed you this on the Key 61. This is probably my favorite feature of all on any of the NPCs is Key Detect. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah, right? yeah. So, you when did. I first started making beats, I was cutting samples from vinyl records and I'd sit at my, you know, MIDI keyboard or my keyboard and try to find a bass note to go along. And I'm sitting here hitting each note and like, that one doesn't sound right. Oh, that one's close. Sometimes it'd take me like a half hour just to find the right note because I was second guessing myself. I didn't know anything about, you know, music theory or yeah. structure. I, I was just trying to find bass notes that go along with it. This is how easy it is now. You tap on your sample, you hit sample edit, you tab over, and it tells you that sample is in A major. Hmm. So now <laughs> I know when I'm playing these VST tracks, whichever sound I have loaded up, you can go directly to I it. just set my scale and to A major and I'm playing in key with that right. sample. That is too like easy, that. dude. That is too easy. Does it um do you know does it detect the tempo as well or how does that work? 
it will detect the, the tempo, right? I just hit sample, edit again, and it's telling me right here that the natural tempo of that sample Bro, is 90 BPM. That is crazy. So you can actually like drag and drop a sample in and it detect it, and then te you can set your whole project to that. Bro, that's crazy. That super is easy. crazy. That is super easy. I don't think wow. it could get more easy than this, yeah. to be honest with you. you yeah. know? It, it's telling you what key your sample is in. You're able to set the pads to only play in that key and scale. Not only can you play notes along, you could set it to play chords and chord progressions and all of these things, you know, with minimal effort yeah. right out the box. Bro, that is crazy. Man, job, bro. You don't, you don't put me on. I appreciate you coming through today, man. It's you already know, always a good time when you're in the building, bro. Thank you for taking the time to stop through and to show me this amazing. We get the first look at the MPC One Plus. We got my guy, John, here showing me how to rock and roll with it. I'm definitely going to be creating some content on this bad boy, so... I appreciate you. Don't don't get mad if I hit you up and call you like 50 million times. Nah, man, I'm, I'm excited for the next time <laughs> yeah. I come out to where we could link a couple of these together with the wireless Wi-Fi Ableton link and yeah. we can cook up together with two separate units. Yeah. That's what I'm looking forward yeah, to. Yeah, we need man. to do that, bro. Maybe I, I'll, I'll uh, practice on the live and then you bring the MPC One Plus and we can go ahead and get that cooking. Yeah, man. So, yeah. Add both of our flavors into one beat all wirelessly. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't I don't finger drum, so I'm gonna be doing like you doing and just tapping on the pads and what a time. It's all good. I it, can finger drum, but I have a hard time keeping it in time. Time, yeah, that's you my know, thing. I can too, do it yeah. live, but once I get that click track going, I sometimes I lose the click track. So yeah. I just like to make it as easy as possible on myself. And this you know? definitely does make it easy, bro. Like it is too easy. So, but man, I appreciate you coming out, bro. Anytime you want to stop by and show me some new gear. You know you're always more than welcome to stop oh, by. Oh, you bro. know I'll be by multitude of times, man. Probably once a month. Whether it'll be new gear every time, I'm going to be out here. We can dig in any questions you have. Obviously, we're only touching the surface of yeah. what this is capable of. I'm not really going deep into everything. I'm not sitting here trying to make the most perfect beat. But, you know, you take this into your own time. You take the time you want, and you'll see how quickly you'll get your beats sounding banging, man. Right, right out the box with this thing. You won't even need to add anything to it. Say less, bro. I appreciate you, man. Bye, guy. <laughs> <laughs>